Uh, in front of us, we have the minutes from the previous meeting um, and some correspondence. Uh, uh, first, I'd like to review the uh, uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Any comments? Do I hear a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that the meeting's minutes from the previous meeting be accepted. Any second? Second. All those in favor? Right. We have also in front of us tonight some correspondence from a letter from Mr. R. Schumann, a letter from Mr. R. Wilson Irwin, a memorandum from the Planning Board to the Town Council Historic Amendments, and a Sh Shoreland Zoning News Winter Update. Our first uh, order of business this evening is, and Chris Thompson, on behalf of the Town of Cape Elizabeth, is requesting a resource protection permit to construct a boardwalk in a wetland area located behind the Public Works Garage, located off 21 Denison Drive. The Planning Board deemed the application complete, scheduled the public hearing for this evening. The application re will be reviewed for compliance with Section 19-8-3 Resource Protection Standards. Mr. Thompson. Hey, do you just want a summary of the project? Yes, please. Okay. Um, my name is Chris Thompson. I'm a member of Boy Scout Troop 30, and I'm working on my Eagle project, and it'll be for a boardwalk on the Goldcrest property. Um, it'll be 78 feet long and 5 feet wide, made out of pressure-treated wood and hemlock logs and treks, which is ground up plastic for decking. Uh, it will be constructed a little ways away from a swamp, so I need the uh, permit for make sure it's okay. And uh, the area is approximately 390 square feet and is already cleared of plants and vegetation, so the only thing that we have to be moved is um, some pallets that are over the stream that's there right now and just some small shrubs will have to be trimmed, so the area won't have to be changed too much. Any uh, questions by the board at this time? Okay, thank you, Mr. Thompson. I will now open the hearing. If there is anyone in the audience tonight that would like to discuss this subject or have any comments, would you please come forward to the podium? I will close the hearing at this time, seeing why nobody is interested in having any comments at this point. Uh, um, is there any discussion by the board members? Any questions of Mr. Thompson before we proceed? And then do I hear a motion? <laughs> Mr. Serrano. Yes, I'd like to make a motion. Findings of fact, number one, Chris Thompson, on behalf of the town of Cape Elizabeth, is requesting a resource protection permit to construct a boardwalk in a wetland area located behind the Public Works Garage, located off 21 Denison Drive. Two, the application substantially complies with section 19-8-3 resource protection standards. Therefore, be it ordered that based upon the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Chris Thompson on behalf of the town of Cape Elizabeth for a resource protection permit to construct a boardwalk behind the public works garage located at 21 Denison Drive be approved. Do I hear a second? Second. There's a second in front of us. Um, is there any discussion? Make the second. Mr. Uh, Any discussions at all? Any comments? <clears throat> Hearing none, then uh, I will present it to a vote. All those in favor of the motion that's been made, uh, please show by raising the right hand. It's unanimous, Mr. Thompson. Congratulations. And good luck on your project. Thank you.
Second item on our agenda this evening is the Town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting a site plan review for landscape improvements and construction, reconstruction of pedestrian headlight. The Planning Board deemed the application complete and scheduled a public hearing for this evening. The application will be reviewed for compliance with Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations. Mr. Emery, will you, Thank you bring us up to date, please? <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, board members. Uh, my name is Tom Emery. I'm a land use consultant. We've been retained by the town of Cape Elizabeth to uh, prepare the design drawings for the uh, Portland Headlight landscape, and landscape Improvements. With me this evening is Paul Phillips, chair of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, and Michael McGovern, uh, town manager. Uh, we have uh, prepared uh, the design. I think most of you were on the site walk uh, earlier in the month. And just to get everybody oriented, this is one of the original concept uh, documents. The ocean is to the right. This is the Portland headlight here. This is the existing uh, Portland headlight parking lot. And to the left of this diagram would be the uh, central parking lot. Uh, we've included in all of our presentations previously uh, this photo board, which anyone is welcome to come and take a look at, but it depicts all of the uh, project sites that uh, we'll be uh, discussing briefly this evening. The proposed project had really three main goals. Uh, the principal goal was the issue of pedestrian safety and convenience. The secondary goal was to stabilize the eroded areas due to either weathering or foot traffic in the park. And the third goal was to provide general uh, aesthetic and landscape uh, improvements associated with the project areas. We are seeking site plan approval for the entire project area that uh, has several main components. One is the access near Battery Blair and a set of new stairs coming down from Battery Blair, the relocation of a, a crosswalk, the extension of a walkway along the southerly side of the existing driveway connecting into uh, the Portland headlight, and then a partial southerly extension of that walkway, and an extension of a walkway near the fence line and connecting in and rehabilitation of existing uh, stone steps to the north. Around the Portland headlight lighthouse, we're looking at some minor landscape improvements and correction of some eroded areas, and then uh, some uh, permanent pavers along the uh, fence line where there's a lot of foot traffic. One of the questions that came up as a result of our previous uh, submittal was uh, phasing this project. Right now we've identified several areas of work, but we have uh, uh, a principal phase one piece of work which will include the battery blare access uh, and refreshing of that walkway, the stairs from battery blare, the partial widening of a, an existing paved sidewalk, the extension and construction of a new sidewalk that will be constructed similar to the uh, cliff walk trail with recycled pavement and aggregate. That will have associated landscaping improvements with it, a slight widening of the sidewalk in front of the pull and headlight, and then the relocation and uh, similar treatment as the cliff walk trail of a sidewalk or a, or a trail heading up toward in the reconstruction of these stairs. The Portland headlight improvements, the improvements uh, immediately adjacent to the lighthouse are in the phase two uh, project. This is an illustrative uh, drawing that's from the uh, packet that shows uh, the proposed improvements. Uh, if you remember the, the site walk at the uh, central parking lot here, there's a single stone marker with a plaque on it that 
uh, monuments the access to the Battery Blair Memorial area. Uh, that's a fairly eroded area and the, and the stone just stands there by itself. So we're looking at adding an additional stone on either side, some low shrubbery behind that on a low earth mound, and to put some specialty pavement in that area and to uh, reconstruct the uh, culvert in that area. If you approach Battery Blair, one of the issues uh, in terms of pedestrian access and primary issues is is that people leaving Battery Blair come down an eroded uh, hillside and then walk down the sidewalk or cross immediately at the bottom of those stairs and, or that hill and then head down the middle of the roadway rather than crossing to the other side of the street and using the sidewalk. It was the, I think, the consensus of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission that the, the best way of dealing with the pedestrian uh, conflict in the roadway was to provide an immediate walkway on the same side of the, the street. As they come down the, the bottom of those stairs, we'll have a wood fence that matches all the existing fence in the fort that will deflect people to the right. And then once headed to the right, we'll have a split walkway here that will surround the existing pine tree uh, that's on an earth mound and we'll relocate some of those plant materials uh, behind and front and to the side. And then that walkway will extend along the southerly side of the existing parking lot and connect into the existing walk system that's in front of the Portland headlight. This walk is about eight feet wide, uh, simply to make it eight to ten feet to make it more inviting to get allow more people uh, to walk on, on this side of the driveway. It also makes a uh, smooth connection to the south, which is envisioned as someday being a continuation of the cliff walk trail type, type treatment. We provide a focal point at the binoculars, probably the most popular uh, photo spot for the lighthouse. And then we make a wider access in front of the, the lighthouse itself. If you, excuse me, if you approach the lighthouse uh, and uh, people exiting from the lighthouse wanting to get to the cliff walk trail um, have several options, but what we've done is removed an existing fence line here since the town owns both properties we're using low landscape mounds to separate vehicular traffic and pedestrian traffic and to focus people along the uh, new walkway. The, there's a rock outcrop here and then takes them along the fence line to the existing uh, granite stairs. Those same people have the choice, of, as they do now, to go way out to the street and walk up and go up to the cliff walk in this direction or as they walk on the new walk they can take a more rustic trail, let's call it. Uh, over toward the picnic area or, or eventually up to the cliff walk. As part of this, we're also proposing uh, to provide emergency access. There's a couple of parking spaces here, but the fire trucks can come in and go all the way to the fence line. We'll have uh, full depth uh, base gravel there for them to travel on. And that really is uh, the limits of the phase one project. Phase two project is the area from the walkway here at the lighthouse all the way in and surrounding the lighthouse. As you saw on the site walk and you could see from the photographs, the main issue here is that there's just a tremendous amount of congestion. More people want to be in this area than can fit comfortably. But what we're proposing to do is to add paving stones along the perimeter along this fence line. There's a large ledge outcrop here that we want to continue to expose that ledge and then add some low growing ground covers on either side uh, to discourage people from walking uh, in that area and then to provide additional stone paving on this side of the fence. This again is a very popular overlook and uh, uh, photography point has a wonderful view toward Portland and to the Cliff Walk Trail and to one of the steepest cliffs in the fort. As people go past the museum entrance and around the back of the lighthouse tower, there's uh, two existing focal points here. One is the foghorn and uh, one is another overlook spot. Those two spots will have additional uh, stone pavers placed in. The edge, which is now eroded, will be treated the same way the cliff walk trail is with a recycled aggregate. And that will come back up and tie into the existing pavement along the edge of the lighthouse. There's also a, a commemorative uh, sign here uh, that we had once uh, depicted as being in uh, the same pavement as the Cliff Walk Trail. As a result of the uh, site walk, we've elected to just use paving stones set in the, on the turf there to 
allow people to take a few steps forward to either photograph the sign or get closer to see what it, uh, the sign says. There will be some minor widening of the existing pavement around the lighthouse to accommodate two people walking abreast, but also just to make the transition in grade. And a question was asked at the site walk whether we were just going to simply cut and splice. Uh, in estimating the cost of this, we're, we're assuming that regardless of the condition of the existing pavement, that by the time a machine gets in here and cuts and patches, we're going to assume that it all has to be replaced anyway, so it'll be a nice uh, finished uh, project when it's done. And that, uh, that would be the completion of uh, both phases of the project. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Anybody have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Emery. I think at this time we'll open it for a public hearing. Public hearing is open regarding uh, site plan review for uh, Fort Williams. Is there anybody in the audience that's interested in speaking on this issue? At this time I see no interest, uh, so I will close public hearing and uh, Open it up again, Mr. Emery, for further discussion of your uh, project. Are there any uh, questions or concerns that you'd like to discuss at this time? Just, just wanted to confirm, Mr. Emery, that n none of the traffic patterns will change as a result of this. That's correct. Okay. The only, uh, the only change is going to be the new trail connection uh, just as you're exiting the lighthouse area along the edge of the uh, rock outcrop. It's not the cliff itself. It's a rock outcrop that sort of defines the entrance to the lighthouse area. And that, that allows uh, just a greater dispersion of, of people without having everybody having to get back out where the bus traffic is and so forth. Um, any other questions? Could you refresh my memory? What was the timing on phase two? Phase two is as soon as the town uh, elects to uh, proceed and has the money to proceed with the project. Presumably as early as the, I'm sorry, the Portland Headlight Fund is, uh, <laughs> thank you, uh, has adequate funds to proceed. If I had to say when, how soon is that, I would say next year would be the earliest that we would expect to proceed with that work. Okay, thank you. Uh, I thought in the phase two section of this project that the area leading up to that sign was not going to be a, an actual walkway, but just uh, stone. That's, that's correct. Is that what you described earlier? That's what I okay. described. Right, thank you. Any other questions? A couple of comments I'd like to make. Um, the first question would be time frame, just for the record. Uh, assuming approval immediately, would construct when would construction start? And what's your time scale? We're going to bid the project as soon as we, we can, uh, within about a week or so, uh, and we would like to have as much of this under construction prior to Memorial Day weekend. So we're, we want to proceed as soon as possible, but there's, as you know, we have to go through public bidding and so forth. That's at least a month process. So we'll be starting this uh, in the, about the middle to late May at the earliest. I am one other comment. I'm very pleased that you've included uh, the, going to the left, the new outcropping, the walkway that goes up into the cliff walk. I think that's a real safety hazard. I'm glad that you've included that. Yeah. Any other questions? Do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Yes, Ms. Findings of fact, one, the town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting site plan review for landscape improvements and the construction, reconstruction of pedestrian walkways to Portland Headlight, which requires review under section 19-9. Two, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan review of landscape improvements and walkway construction reconstruction at Portland Headlight be approved. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. The motion's been made and seconded. Do I have any comments or any questions? <coughs> 
Hearing no comments, then I will present it for a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please show by raising their right hand. All those opposed? It's a carried motion. Good evening. Thank you. And a new business this evening, uh, Maine Medical Center is requesting a site plan review for a 500 square foot addition to the Sperwink Medical Building located at 155 Sperwink Ave. The medical building is a non-conforming use in an RC district. However, the originally approved plan depicted an area for expansion and the non-conforming provisions do allow expansion shown on approved plans. The application will be reviewed for compliance with Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulation. Uh, could you introduce the project, please, and uh, bring us up to date? Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, I need to recuse myself from consideration of this application, uh, as before in workshop, uh, but I will stay for the next item on the agenda. Great. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Board, I'm Paul Gray. I'm the Vice President of Planning at Maine Medical Center. Uh, we're here tonight, as was already referenced, seeking a site plan amendment to a previously approved site plan. Uh, the primary purpose of this project is to provide for a 1,000 square foot addition, 500 square feet on each level, which will enable us to put a fully operative elevator into the building which will enable handicapped access to both the lower and upper levels of the building. Currently, the uh, facility does not have that capability. In addition, we'll make some changes to the site uh, relative to the addition closer to the facility of some handicapped parking. And thirdly, make some general upgrades uh, to the site itself, uh, particularly in the parking lot. And then we'll do a major renovation of the entire inside of the facility to bring it up to date for, for patient care. Uh, the building will be occupied by physicians and dentists and other healthcare professionals, as it currently is. And um, we have submitted all the, the necessary documentation and have had a couple of follow-ups with the staff relative to some additional information that was required. Um, the elevator itself and the new, there actually is an entry here now that you walk, you would have to walk across the grass and up several wooden steps to enter the building here in the middle now. There's an entrance on this side and an entrance on this side. Traffic comes in and around or parks here and walks up. This will provide for new handicapped parking here adjacent to the building and a new walkway so that the access can be provided to the, to the location where the elevator will actually be located. And then we'll renovate the interior of the building. Um, beyond that, um, not sure what else you need to know about the project itself, we can address some of the issues in the staff memorandum if you'd like or how you'd like to proceed. What we'd like to do is proceed now to determine whether uh, it's a complete uh, application, which the board will discuss at this time. Okay. Um, are there any uh, comments or questions by the board member? Um, Yes, Mr. Chairman, I noticed that yes, we were provided with a plan this evening and there was 
our memorandum and our revised memorandum, we now have this plan. And I guess my question for Maureen is, if you had an opportunity to look at this plan and does it address any of the open issues that were still open as of the last meeting? The, the plan you have in front of you was, um, it's a survey stamped by a registered main surveyor, so it would address item one. Um, if you want, I can go through uh, my summary of completeness. That would, that would, that would be helpful. helpful. Okay. Um, and what I've done is, in your package, there's a checklist which summarizes all the information that you require, and I've only called out the items that uh, potentially could be incomplete. Starting with number one, uh, the board has almost always required a, a stamp survey. Uh, it really is where you begin to start figuring out where everything else is. And that has been provided and was on the pack on the, the podium for you this evening. Uh, starting num with number seven, uh, typically you ask for uh, actual dimension setbacks, side, front, and rear. Um, on the revised submission that you received in the mail, uh, Property line setbacks were provided for the front and the rear, but not the side. Uh, under number 11, uh, there were several items that were uh, requested by the town engineer that were not in the original submission. He has been forwarded the revised submission, uh, but he didn't really get it in time to get back to us. So uh, until he says that it's, it's complete, it, it's still technically incomplete. Uh, under items 12B and C, uh, the plans include more utility information. I did talk to the applicant regarding the elusive sewer line, and uh, the problem was I was looking for a line somewhere between the front of the building and the road, and in fact, in fact what happens is the sewer line connects up to the back of the building and then runs up the side property line, so that is shown on the plans. Um, there, there are two water lines shown on the plans. Apparently one of them is the existing water line, and the other one is a brand new water line that's going to serve uh, the sprinkler system. So the plans are not mislabeled in terms of water lines. There actually will be two. Under 13, uh, the original submission called out a plant called AU, but didn't describe what it is. In fact, that is now identified, but there still are, are no quantities listed. You could still count the actual um, circles of each different type of plant. Uh, under 14, I had said that the lighting information had been not been submitted. In fact, that was in the original submission. There are two different kinds of lights, and the catalog cuts are in there and the wattages. Uh, and then under 16, uh, there, there was not in the original submission information that talked about the technical capability of the applicant, and that uh, in the more recent submission, they did mention some projects they've completed in both Portland and Scarborough. And I should note that uh, they also have submitted additional information on financial capability in case the board would like to see that. So uh, I think that's my best summary of where it is as of this evening. Are there any questions? A quick question. The, the town engineer had indicated that there were still some outstanding issues in his mind, but that he was willing to go ahead if those issues are addressed. And now he's been given some additional information, and so we don't know whether there are other outstanding issues or whether all of those outstanding issues have been addressed. Is that correct? Right. And the, the board has always had this issue of something may be complete but may not be satisfactory. And I believe what the engineer was saying is that he's got enough information on these plans that as far as he's concerned, they're complete, but there are still some changes that he would like to see made, some, some things that are missing but are so minor that um, they really aren't a completeness kind of issue. So that the open items are setback information and town engineer review. Right, and, and the, the landscape. Right. 
mean, the, but the there is a landscaping yeah. there is a landscaping key it's just there's usually some additional information and on the setback um, there's no doubt looking at the plan that there's more than sufficient setback to meet our current setback requirements it's just that when you ask for information I go through and I try to find everything that's missing that doesn't necessarily mean that what's missing is important enough to not deem it complete There was some com some note made about uh, exterior materials and identification of those. Has that been addressed? Yes. Uh, the more recent submission does have the same uh, elevations that you saw before, but it calls out what the materials uh, okay. are that are going to be used. Do we know from the applicant what the setback is from the side property line, even though it isn't effective? 20 feet. It's the, this direction. I'm correct. You're talking about the setback in this direction. Is that right? I think what Mr. Seraldo was asking is what is your actual setback from your property line, which is well in excess of 20 feet. Hi, my name is Will Conway with Sebago Technics. Um, what uh, Maureen is referring to is we provided the setback within the property line is 20 feet, but uh, your ordinance requires that we show dimensions. We showed one here and here. In all cases, it, they exceed the setback. Here, I couldn't tell you. It's probably 257.8 feet or something, but I don't know the number, but it's considerably beyond what you require. As far as completeness is concerned, I guess, even though it was as of this afternoon, it seems like the outstanding information has been provided uh, with the only uh, missing, if you will, information being what the town engineer needs to look at, although he's already said that he has enough information as far as completeness is concerned. He may have other issues and we may have to address that later, but it doesn't sound as if he feels that the application isn't complete. So uh, on that issue, I think, I think we're all set. Are you satisfied with the landscape comments? And personally, I, I am. I think that's sufficient for completeness. We may have questions on the landscaping, but not as far as completeness goes. I concur. I, I have some concerns about the the landscaping, but I don't think that affects the completeness of the application. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Um, yeah, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Maine Medical Center for site plan review of an addition to the existing Spurwink Medical Building located at 155 Spurwink Avenue be deemed complete. Can I hear a second? Second. I've heard a second. Is there any further discussion? Uh, 
Hearing no further discussion, I will present it for a vote. All those in favor of the approval of the motion, please show by raising their right hand. The motion carried. The project is deemed complete. Um, at this time, we'd like to open it up for further discussion and uh, question and clarify some information and some questions that we might have. Sir, can you comment on the uh, intended repairs to the parking lot? I understand, and I've, I've observed myself, that it's prone to some uh, water damage and, and frost heaves and that sort of thing? Yeah, the uh, parking lot suffered some fairly extensive damage. I was by there again this evening to look at it, and uh, there are a number of spots on the site, uh, particularly in the parking lot, that are going to require rework and, com and completely to clean them up. And I can assure you that we are going to make those for improvements um, regardless of how this project goes. That parking lot just doesn't, doesn't meet the standard that we like to see with the facilities that we own and operate. That will be done. And could you also uh, discuss why you chose not to include any islands or other landscaping in that parking lot? Yeah. Um, there are a couple of issues there for us that uh, relative to the, to the lot and the necessity for for um, putting islands through it. Um, one, obviously it would reduce the number of parking spaces that we'd have available at the site. Not below the required number, I would point out, but it would take some spaces out. And in a primary care practice like this, parking is a very important part of, of having available spaces. That's issue number one. So we prefer not to do that. Uh, secondly, uh, the actual parking lot sits down a fair amount below the road level above when you're looking when you're coming down the road and is not as visible as some lots might be where everything is on the same grade and we were hoping to be able to not have to include those uh, since they're not as visible uh, from the area as they might be at some other site and those were the principal reasons I guess just from my own perspective it's uh, although you're right it does sit a little bit below grade uh, if anything that makes the parking lot more visible because you're sort of looking at it from on high instead of at eye level um, but it is a pretty large expanse of paved yes, area. And I would think for a, a professional medical campus sort of facility, you'd, you'd want the attractive appearance that comes with a little bit of sprucing up. Well, we'd be glad to look at it and see what we can do. Again, I, I provided I don't have to totally disrupt my parking available. Understood. For, for that purpose. One of the things I think uh, would be good for us to consider is a site walk before we, we go to a final vote on this. I think it would be helpful. I would concur with that, too. And we'd welcome the opportunity for you to do that any time, either individually or collectively or however it can be arranged. Uh, keeping on the issue of the parking lot, is there a, there's a dumpster to be placed somewhere in the parking lot area? It sits up in this corner here. Has any thought been given to it screen? It will be screened with a fence. Okay. Cedar fence. Is that it? Okay. we got tonight. Uh, wrong. Yeah, I have a question about maybe someone can locate for me the maple trees that are noted that are going to be removed. And there are three trees that sit along this end of the building. This is the end of the building, the roadway, and these three trees sit in this very narrow space between the, the roadway and the existing building. And they are already pulling up out of the ground in terms of their root structure. They're encroaching on the building both at the root level as well as the, the tree level. And uh, what we intend to or propose to do is to, to cut them off at the ground, grind out the stumps, and uh, not replace them there because it just, it's getting too, the trees are too big for the, for the how, spot. How tall are they, you know? Oh, 35 to 20 feet. Yeah, they extend well above the mm -hmm. building. Was there any was there any discussion of any type of landscaping to replace them to provide some screening or cover from that side? There is some screening that exists from these large trees that are already there. There may be the opportunity somewhere in here to provide some other screening, uh, but these are fairly good sized trees. I think we'll see when you get on the on the site. But there may be an opportunity somewhere in here. I'm not a designer, mm -hmm. but there may be the opportunity to provide some additional screening on that. 
outside. But we'd prefer not to have it here because of what it's doing to the structure itself and the, and the actual foundation. And it crumbles the walkway and the curb and everything else along there. Right, if they're trees, you mean? Yeah. Right, there's always other type shrubs and things. Could possibly be. Could you review for me one, one time quickly what the traffic flow is? I think I, I may have seen your hand go the wrong direction or misunderstood. Well, I was discussing the current flow, which is around this way. Okay, but you're reversing that. But we're going to have in here and two-way in here and then on ramp. Okay, thank you. Is that correct? Okay. Okay, the, and the two-way at the top going to the right is only for people that are parked in those. In the same spot. Yeah. Right, that's the only traffic that would be is that correct? going yes. the other way. Okay. They need to get in and out. Right. Mr. Gray, I have a few questions of clarification. On the Gradings in the utility plan that we received uh, this week. There's an indication that there's a riprap coming down from the street across the center of the uh, buffer zone in the front. If I can have Will address that for you, please, sir. Thank you. Uh, that refers to this area here. Um, as, as you may be familiar, there's, there's a pretty significant drainage problem. There's a, uh, a culvert that outlets um, from Spurway and comes down through a sort of an old concrete line channel. Right. And then it's conveyed more across surface than anything else. We're going to be conveying that completely underground. And one of the improvements is to take that old concrete out and uh, place some stone and some... Uh, ornamental grasses and so forth, just to give it a more uh, natural look than, than what is current. My question is, is, is there going to be a catch base in there before you go across the driveway? And then, then it becomes piped underground? Is that the way? In this location? Yes. This, it, it won't be a basin. There will be a, uh, a basin here and a basin here. This will be, be an, um, an open invert, but not a basin. And then you have a uh, catch basin on the other side. Is that where it is? I saw a note on the drawing, the plan. Right. There, the, uh, it will go from this location to a catch basin in this vicinity yep. and uh, then tie into the existing basin. Currently, it goes by surface, really, from this point, although this, this also fails at times. And uh, there's icing uh, that occurs and tremendous pavement damage in this area for that reason. But, so the, the idea is to, is to close the system and convey it across. Another question while you're there. Um, on that same plan, C201, the, I assume that the, the uh, drawing down the lower left hand is, is the pavement of the main road going by and the slope that will be maintained down through that. Um, buffer zone in the front there, setback. Is that what that is? No. Are you referring to the detail? There's a detail on yeah. here showing uh, backfill and pavement. Is that for the parking lot or is that for the main road? That, that detail is for this area here. Oh, okay. Oh, there it is, A201. I see it now. I'm sorry. So there is uh, quite a bit of grade on the back side of that. Uh, well, really what happens there now is... This driveway here is relatively flat, and there's a curb. And so water tends to pond in that area, again, creating this pavement damage. So that detail, uh, what that basically requires us to do is remove that curb so that that water can sheet flow. And then in, um, in addition to that, we're going to be adding some pervious material under this lawn area so that the, the base materials under the pavement structure can also drain. Another question I had, 
it isn't quite clear to me, but on that property in front between the building and Sprawink Ave, is there any vegetation change planned there at this time? No. Um, we're going to be retaining all the uh, all those uh, all the vegetation that's there currently. And there's one other comment that I'd like to make: is that if there's any vegetation proposed as buffer, I'm hoping that the height of what you put in there new uh, will pretty much stay and, and provide sort of a site re a relief for those people that uh, live on either side or exist on either side of the property. I'm hoping that the height elevation of whatever you put in there is pretty close to what's there at this point. In this area here? Yes, and on the other side. Uh, one other question, I think it did come up, but my understanding in the cupola that you're using that as part of your mechanical system to reject your heat, is there any other equipment located outside the building presently? Uh, this will be Patrick Austin from JSA, the architectural firm. Yeah. I'll introduce myself again, <laughs> just for the record, Patrick Austin, JSA, the architecture firm. Um, there are currently condensers that are located um, on this side of the building, on the ground. Those will be removed as part of our um, reworking of the interior of the building and replaced with a single unit, which will, we're, we're installing a central air handling unit for the building as a whole. And so what I believe now are three uh, condenser units out there will be consolidated into one. Um, to be located in the same area as the existing ones. Will it be a site barrier for those and, um, and anything to protect uh, from sound? Currently, it's not, uh, that's not planned. Part of its job is to reject heat, and it, it's a very narrow uh, area, as we've mentioned earlier. So to the extent that we could uh, provide barriers, it would, in part, inhibit it from functioning properly. Uh, there may be an opportunity to put some uh, low planting bushes, things of that nature that might help shield it. I just wanted to make a comment on that regard because that has been a problem in several sites that I've seen and you should be prepared if it doesn't affect it. If it does, it doesn't affect the neighbors. I think that building very rarely operates at night, so... Um, except for the fact that sometimes those systems do run all night to reject the heat. But those are the only comments I have. Thank you. Uh, on the, now you got my curiosity. On the air, air conditioning, air handling units, the drawing that we have in front of us shows seven units, and you're saying those seven will be replaced by one? Yes. Yeah, I may have mis, uh, misspoke with regard to the number. I'm not a mechanical engineer, but... Uh, they'll be replaced by one. They're currently, the systems within the building are residential in mm -hmm. their, their nature, and each suite um, within the building uh, has multiple small uh, residential uh, furnaces, air handling units, things of that nature. And our intention is to uh, centralize uh, the system for the entire building. We're building a new boiler room. Uh, in the basement of the building to have a central boiler for hot water and for heat and a central air handling unit which will be stored which will be installed up in the attic space the dormer and the cupola uh, the dormer will act as an air intake uh, the cupola will act as an exhaust air uh, uh, mechanism so there won't be any blowers or, or mechanical uh, pieces of equipment inside the dormer and the cupola there'll just be Air it'll taken just, it'll just be, uh, there will be a grill, uh, a louver, and uh, air will be going in and out, and there will be no rooftop uh, uh, air handling equipment that will be left exposed on top of the building. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. There was a discussion earlier about a site walk. Is there any thoughts about when you'd like to conduct one? Yes, and when? 
Like other fellow board members, I have a lot of questions about um, the landscaping plan, I think. Um, it looks like there's a removal of a lot of trees planned, and you know, I think I really need to go out and see you know, which trees and um, look at the parking lot. So I support a site walk entirely. When would you like to do that? Saturdays. About the, the set this coming Saturday? or Saturday's the best time for me. How about everybody else? Uh, looks 20th. like it, it would be <coughs> May 5th. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. 28th. Mm -hmm. Do we have any public notice requirements that have a, a time clock associated with them? If you schedule it at this meeting, we're all set. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> How about you folks? Oh. Clock. Will you need access inside the building? Um, I don't think I would. Uh, maybe no. nobody else. It's not really in our purview, is it? It would be nice if somebody was there and could discuss it with us. And we typically do it at 8 o'clock in the morning. So we would do it uh, April 28th at 8 a.m. And it uh, probably be best if we just met right in the parking lot. Okay. What is your interest as a board to, on a public hearing? Well, it's not a mu municipal building. Um, it certainly is a high, highly visible building. Um, and I would be inclined to hold a public hearing. Has there been any commentary from abutters or, or neighbors? No. Not well. No one has contacted me. I would like to make a comment, though, that I think as a board it would be prudent that we would at least offer a chance for the public to hear it at the next meeting, um, only from the standpoint if, uh, if we don't do that in, in a later date, we uh, get some repercussion. At least we've got some grounds to stand on. So. Sir, is there anybody? Uh, <coughs> Willing to make a motion to I have a motion. Mr. Sherman. That be it further ordered that the above application be tabled to the regular May 15th meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I will uh, request a vote. Those in favor, please show by raising their right hand. The motion is carried. We will schedule a site walk for next Saturday morning. And May 15th, we will schedule a public hearing and uh, put your project on that agenda for the 15th. If you have any questions in the meantime, please uh, direct them to Ms. O'Mara. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. final uh, subject on our agenda this evening is the town council has forwarded the attached amendment regarding the BA district planning board consideration. The zoning ordinance amendment would prohibit a non-residential use and a conditional use on the same lot. This time I'd like to open it up for discussion. 
I have a question for Maureen. The, uh, the notice that went out to residents and property owners on April 10th, has there been any other response, either verbal or written, besides the letter from Mr. Duvall? Uh, no, but we would mail another notice out when you schedule your public hearing, notifying people that public hearings are scheduled and some people know to wait until that moment and some people may not have any comment. When this was originally uh, brought before the council, there were property owners in the VA district that did come to my office and ask questions about it, however. Okay, so there's some awareness. Yes. Some interest, as I would expect. <laughs> Any other discussion? I, we, we have discussed this before. I, I think it's, uh, it's too broad for too broad a purpose and would affect too many uh, businesses potentially. Uh, but I would be very curious to hear at a public hearing what people might have to say. I agree. Anybody care to make a motion? Sure. Uh, motion, Mr. Chairman. Be it ordered that based on the information submitted and the facts presented, the proposed VA District Zoning Ordinance Amendment be tabled to the regular May 15th Planning Board meeting, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Second. I've heard a motion and I hear a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing no comments, uh, I will Present it for a vote. The motion's been made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor, show by raising your right hand. The motion carries. We will schedule a public hearing on May 15th, planning board meeting. Excuse me, who seconded the motion? Charles. Charles. Mr. Charles. Any other further business? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Meeting is adjourned. 23rd.